Hey, hey, Marcus House with you here. Today we are going to use a Falcon 9 to see if we can get a vessel up to Jupiter as well as see if we can do some gravity assists and explain gravity assists a little more uh, with realism overhaul as we have it installed here with Kerbal Space Program. We're just waiting here for the relative inclination displayed in the top left there to be as close to zero as possible. And as it approaches zero, we're going to launch our Falcon 9 here. Uh, the payload in the fairings is basically a small satellite also hooked to a booster stage which is going to boost our satellite all the way up to intercept with Jupiter. And from there we're going to be able to do some very cool gravity assists and explain how gravity assists actually work. They can be extremely powerful if used in the right way. So we're launching our Falcon 9 here just coming up to around 800 meters per second here. Uh, not going to be too far off now from decoupling this. Uh, we want to leave around 15,000 units of fuel here in this stage just so that it can come down and land. Firing off stage two there as we have main engine cutoff and just about to deploy the fairings so that we can lighten the load even further as we escape the thickest parts of the atmosphere, just passing 100 kilometers in altitude there now. Just because of the time of year that we are needing to do our launch to intersect with Jupiter, we did have to make this a night launch mission. That is because if we were on the day side of the planet, we would be unable to actually launch at the correct inclination to align us with the moon and Jupiter as well. So we picked a time which was going to suit us to launch from Cape Canaveral. Now, this is a very large payload. What we uh, need to do is push this most of the way to orbit and just use the final RL-10 engine here just to circularize our orbit only a few hundred meters per second that we needed to burn there and circularizing at around 150 kilometers there so there we go we are now perfectly aligned with the moon's inclination there which means we're going to be able to eject here and do quite an efficient burn out to Jupiter so if we zoom right out here we can see Jupiter on the outside orbit we want to make sure that we eject from the Earth's sphere of influence in a prograde direction that basically means we want to make sure that we are accelerating away from the Earth in the same direction that the Earth is rotating around the Sun. That is going to make our orbit much more elliptical. Uh, just adjusting this here, it's going to make it much more elliptical, so we're going to come right up here and intersect with Jupiter's orbit. Now, this stage of our vessel here using the RL-10 engine is powered using liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. It's got a delta V of around 6,800 meters per second. The delta V meaning the amount of velocity change that our vessel can do with this one stage. So before starting our burn out to Jupiter, we'll extend our solar panels, make sure that our satellite here is all working correctly. We do also have several radioisotope thermoelectric generators here, which are going to give us some energy when we're far away from the sun. Now this burn is going to take around 10 minutes or so to fully complete. So we need to make sure that we start around five minutes just before hitting our maneuver node that we have set up. That means we're going to be uh, spending five minutes on the opposite side over the maneuver node. That's just going to even it out nicely so that our trajectory out here to Jupiter is quite accurate compared to what we've planned out with our maneuver node there. We're obviously not watching this in real time. I have sped this footage up considerably and also cut a lot of this footage out because otherwise it would be quite boring. So there's a few thousand meters per second here to go until our burn is complete, just coming up there, and then we just run out of fuel as we complete that maneuver. Just 150 meters per second adjustment here to be done with our small Astras engine. This engine uh, burns hypergolic propellant, which is a combination of aerosene 50 and nitrogen tetroxide. So the benefit of these two fuels is that there doesn't need to be any sort of ignition source. That is what hypergolic fuels are. They're essentially fuels that that combine together to ignite spontaneously, which is very, very handy if you need to relight an engine many times without an ignition source. So we are just heading away from the Earth here at well over 13,000 meters per second. And what we can do is relative to the sun, we can zoom out of our solar system here and we can see our trajectory out here towards Jupiter. And if we zoom into Jupiter, we can also see where we are planning on coming 
past. That is the orange line on the outside. So we've got Jupiter here in the center there. Orbiting around Jupiter, of course, we have Jupiter's wonderful satellites, Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto here. So we are time warping now many, many, many days until we get to around midway to our uh, planned intercept here with Jupiter. And what we want to do is see if we can use Jupiter to give us a gravity assist that is going to allow us to come up and intersect with Saturn. And I'm just playing around here with what is called a maneuver node in Kerbal Space Program. So there we go. I've got that one pretty well planned out there. And if we zoom back in on Jupiter, we can see where this maneuver node is going to take us. So we just need to do a relatively small correction burn here just to change our trajectory to bring us on that path there. That's going to give us a great ability to get all the way up to Saturn with a seemingly very small vessel. Remember, we only launched this with a Falcon 9 and we're going to be able to get this vessel all the way up to Saturn quite easily by just using the the power of Jupiter's gravity. Now a gravity assist is extremely useful to actually save fuel because instead of using all the delta V we would have needed to get all the way up to Saturn, instead what we can do is use Jupiter to uh, change our direction of travel as we're passing by Jupiter and this is going to very considerably change our trajectory in relation to our orbit around the Sun. So I'm just time warping here now until I get into Jupiter's sphere of influence. And as soon as we do that, we're going to see our orbital velocity of 5,750 meters per second. Now, the interesting thing about a gravity assist is, of course, we speed right up as we pass the periapsis of Jupiter. And as we exit the sphere of influence, we're going to be leaving Jupiter at the exact same velocity that we entered. So you'll see here as we slow down just as we're about to exit, our uh, exit velocity is going to be again 5,750 meters per second. You can see in the bottom left hand side there on the nav ball, the readout there. So we haven't actually gained any velocity at all in relation to Jupiter. We are leaving at the exact speed that we came in. And this is a little counterintuitive because we're obviously changing our velocity quite considerably in relation to our orbit around the Sun. So we left our Earth and we were in a very elliptical orbit between the Earth and Jupiter. And now we are in a much larger orbit between Jupiter and Saturn. Now, the story doesn't necessarily have to end there. We can do even more finer adjustments to see if we can get an encounter at Saturn to also slingshot us up until we could meet with another body. Uh, and in this case, if we just make a very small adjustment, only 37 meters per second just before we decide we're going to swing by Jupiter and do our gravity assist, we can actually get our orbit way out here to Neptune after passing by Saturn as well. So we can do all this essentially completely free just by using the gravity assist effect by uh, Jupiter and also Saturn. So we have uh, just rewound the timeline here just prior to passing Jupiter. So this is a brand new gravity assist through Jupiter. And you can see here as we come by, we're basically completing a right hand angle here, a 90 degree angle. And this is where the power of the gravity assist is actually coming from. As we pass by Jupiter, we get pulled in very strongly towards it. That is going to change our direction, so much so that the relative orbital velocity around the Sun is changed significantly. In this case, I've only really performed a minimal gravity assist here just to change course to intercept with Saturn. In fact, a gravity assist around Jupiter, if done just right, can send a vessel almost completely outside the solar system just with one gravity assist. So as we all know, we can't get this energy from nothing. The vessel's change in velocity around the sun must come from somewhere. And as it turns out, our little satellite here has the opposite effect on Jupiter or in this upcoming case, Saturn. So it's going to now slightly change Saturn's orbital speed around the sun as it is pulled by Saturn to redirect in a different direction. Now, the effect of this on Saturn itself is completely negligible, of course, just due to the massive difference in scale between the two different items here, the, uh, the probe and the actual body of Saturn itself. But what we actually are seeing is that Saturn will slightly speed up or slow down its orbit due to this mutual gravity effect. So we can see here, screaming past Saturn, this is actually a much more uh, aggressive gravity assist, this one. And that's because my goal here was to actually increase our orbit to intersect 
right up near Neptune's orbit. And we can do that quite simply with this single gravity assist around Saturn. Now we haven't done any further burns here. We still have most of the fuel in this little probe and you can see we've been able to change our velocity right up here near Neptune. Now uh, just because of the way the uh, planets were aligned when I first launched this mission, there's no way to intercept with Neptune directly here and that's just because of the alignment of the planets at the time. What I can do though is actually do a burn at the apoapsis here and uh, this is going to mean that when we come around on our next orbit, we can intercept with Neptune. Now, you wouldn't do this in real life because to take another full orbit at this distance around the sun would take well over 100 years. It takes 165 years, as an example, for Neptune to orbit the sun. And we're in an orbit here somewhere between Neptune and Uranus. So there are many drawbacks to using gravity assist. You can only use gravity assist if the planets fall in the right spot to allow you to do them. For example, in uh, the 1970s, the Voyager missions were made possible by the Grand Tour alignment of Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. And a similar alignment is not going to actually happen again until the middle of the 22nd century. So in this case, I've just sort of fudged a second orbit just to show you that we can easily get up here if the planets are aligned correctly. So we are going to finalize this mission by doing a retrograde burn just as we hit the periapsis point in our very tight orbit here around Neptune. Now we still have plenty of Delta V available in this vessel's fuel tank, which is just fantastic. You can see there that we have around 20% of our fuel remaining. Now, considering that we've been very wasteful actually getting to Neptune, this even surprised me. So we are able to drop our orbit right down and remain in a highly elliptical orbit here. So there we go, that is just awesome. Now, all of this was done with one single Falcon 9 launch in a reusable configuration too. There was plenty of fuel to land that first stage. So this answers the question in my mind, can one single Falcon 9 get a little vessel out to the outer solar system? And it certainly can with the benefit of those gravity assists. I hope you found that video interesting. If you've got any questions for me, please do whack them down in the comments below. If this video has earned your subscription, welcome to the channel. And for all of my existing subscribers, thank you for being so awesome. In the tile in the bottom left today, we have my double drone ship landing from the Falcon Heavy. In the top right is my latest video, and in the bottom right, a video that YouTube has selected from my channel just for you by some sad little robot. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you all in the next video.